This is Believe in Buckeyes. I'm Brian Browning. This is all American cornerback Shindy Chekwa. And we're kind of in our feelings today, man. We're a little emotional. One of our guys, one of our uh Believe in Buckeyes uh host, uh host, uh guest on the show, Daylin Hayden, has decided to enter the transfer portal uh in the spring window. Um, fantastic running back. Got it. We we we're we're sad to leave. Chim, what's your thoughts on the on the Hayden situation and I don't know. Did you see it coming? Yeah, I didn't really see it coming so much. I mean, I think um, it was one of the things that was kind of in the back of my mind. I know when we had him on the show, he said, like, look, I'm, you know, I'm here to compete, and I'm going to, you know, play it out, um, and I'm here to stay, right? And that, that that's truly um, what his focus was. But, man, there's just so much other things we got. Running back transferring in, we got um, other potential running backs expected to potentially hit the portal. Um, he didn't play a lot this past season um, for whatever reason, right? And, you know, I just wish him the best, man. He's a guy who every time he got an opportunity, he showed not only that he belonged, that he could potentially be a special back. He also wears a number five, right? So you know, I already know that there's there's special <laughs> there's special in there somewhere where when you, when you put that number on, um, especially with a Buckeye uniform, um, there's something to um, play for. But yeah, I, I'm. It hurts me because you know he his his attitude, his approach to the game, and his talent to me is something that I really wanted to see. Um, so uh, I'm gonna continue to be able to see it. It's just likely mm-hmm. not going to be in a Buckeye uniform. So I wish him the best. Uh, but, it, I mean, the thing I think about is, you know, at this point, why didn't he play last year? You know, like, what? Yeah. Well, even in the Cotton Bowl, like, I mean, there yeah. was opportunities. I know a lot of Buckeye fans were, were like, we need him out there. Um, and the idea in my mind is, well, you know, they didn't want to burn the red shirt so that they can give him opportunities moving forward. But at some point, time runs out. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely a tough situation. I mean, it's funny to say, obviously, he never had a thousand yard season. But I mean, if he was the the starter, he got the carry that he was getting in the games that we seen him play two years ago, even this past season. I mean, he checks that box easily, right? I mean, yeah. you know, his his production from the backfield has always been tremendous. Um, just a nice. I mean, he's just a, he's a running back. I mean, he's a running back. He's a he's a running back. Like he he definitely yeah. he looks the par. Um, the way he goes about going north and south when he has a lane, uh, falling forward when he gets it, when he has the opportunity, taking it to the house for the long runs. I mean, he's definitely a um a, a complete running back out of that standpoint. And over the spring, you know, he starts speaking about him improving on things about you no know, pass blocking, uh, route running, things of that nature. And I mean, all that is fine and dandy, but I mean, he was good enough at running back, in my opinion. To always, you know, be be uh, in consideration of playing. Obviously, last year it was weird, right? We had Chip playing running back. Obviously, we had Mayan Williams in his 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 tenure, and so you know, and obviously, you know, the home run threat with with Trevion Henderson. So he kind of fell back. But once again, that bowl game situation was just weird. We had him on the show. And we was just looking like, oh yeah, this is probably be you know another one of your shows. You know, uh, you know, with with Chip entering the portal, Mayan declaring for the draft. So it just really be you and Trevion Henderson. And we get to the game, all we get is Trevion Henderson and Xavier Johnson uh, in the backfield. So, I mean, obviously, for whatever reason, you know, uh, we he didn't get the snaps that we feel that, you know, that he should have deserved, basically, uh, when when things was clean. But uh, now he'll be taking his talents elsewhere. And obviously, we wish him well. Uh, we know he'll be successful, especially if he gets a you know, program that, that lets him go north and south. And, uh, you know, he definitely will be uh, – he definitely is going to help out somebody's running back room. And the idea is, you know, you have Trevion, who's obviously, obviously a high-level back, probably one of the best running backs, probably maybe one, two, or two in um, the country. And then the other back, Sean Junk- mm-hmm. Junkins, also probably one, maybe two in the country. So you pretty much have the top two or three um, backs in college football. But the, the, the thing that, that that bothers me the most in this situation is that, we don't know if Dallin Hayden is one, two, or three, um, but we know that he's super talented, and there's no way to judge a guy who didn't get the opportunities versus the guys who did, right? Yeah. And that's always right. tough because you can't really project 
what they can grow to be. Um, and I just wish I got the opportunity to see more of them because every time we got to see them, five yards plus a carry, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, five yards plus a carry. That means you're a high level, highly talented back, and there's opportunities. And if you project it forward, like you mentioned, if he got the carries, he, he'd go over a thousand yards. Um, so man, yeah, this one, this one's it tough, man. It stings. This one's stings. tough. One. Yeah, so, yeah, that, that's for sure. So obviously, we wish him well. We'll follow him wherever he goes. We we bring that news to you guys, and I, I know this coming season we'll catch him on some Saturdays and some highlights, and then making some things happen from that standpoint. But but coming up this weekend, we Ohio State, we have our spring game, man. It's a a highly anticipated spring game. Whenever you, whenever there's quarterback competition, there's a, it's a very highly anticipated spring game, right? Uh, but this year kind of makes it special. First time ever that the spring game would be nationally televised on Fox. Um, I mean, I guess with our All Star roster, us you know winning, I'm gonna say we won the all season uh, across the nation. Uh, more people want to kind of tune into that. What's your thoughts on Ohio State landing that national uh, TV spot? And uh, it being unique, does it matter? Or what's your thoughts on that on that situation, Joe? Yeah, I mean, I think it matters. I mean, I think everything matters to recruiting, but Ohio State's um, spring game being on national television, that means the buzz is there. That means Ohio State remains the cream of the crop when it comes to college football. Um, and, you know, there's 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 been some challenges, you know, losing to your rival. Um, uh, but even still, I mean, Ohio State is at the top of college football, at the top of the Big Ten. I don't think it's even a question whether or not they're at the top of the Big Ten. They remain there. But, yeah, I don't want to I don't want to ex- just say that Ohio State runs college football because it, requ- it requires winning. Um, mm-hmm. It requires beating, beating that team up north, et cetera. But in every other facet, <laughs> um, the indication is there. So it's huge for recruiting. It's huge for the brand. And then with the business of foot, of college football changing, it's very, very important. I think, uh, yeah, that's big time. Yeah. And like you say, it just really, it's never been hurt. I mean, I, I obviously, you know, we, we've been around college football for a while. We know certain teams are going to be very successful going to the next year. Uh, but in many of years, if you'd have told me Alabama was going to be on national TV uh, for for some window of time, it's like I'm still not catching that spring game. <laughs> like it's like you know, it's not, it, it just doesn't really matter that much. But this year at Ohio State, I mean, it's just you know, we got the quarterbacks coming in off the transfer portal. We got all the guys coming in out of Alabama, who's um who's who some kind of locked in spot. Some are some kind of competition. Uh, we got Chip Kelly offense. What that offense is going to look like here uh, for Ohio State? What did he have a chance to get installed in the spring game? Obviously, we have just a ton of guys that came back, right? All the superstars that's on the defensive line, our, our superstar uh, defensive backfield. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot to it. So um, I think it's, I think it's definitely a positive thing. Um, you know, I don't see any negatives to it. So kind of get out there um, and, you know, have fun with it. Obviously, you know, when it comes to the spring game, it's kind of like a glorified scrimmage more or less right you know sometimes it's it's not really even real football it's kind of like a game yeah. that the kind of the head coach kind of made up the offense versus defense type of situation uh but i think it'll be it's gonna be good to see hopefully we get it nice right they split the teams down the middle you got these quarterbacks here these quarterbacks over there and you go out there and play a game and i think that's what the i know that's what the fans want but obviously i know in the past coach day kind of does things differently that's what I want to see. Right? Yeah. Split it, it open it, and get to it. It's interesting because what's going to happen, they're going to play the spring game, and, and us and a lot of others are going to take things away from it, right? But do you remember when we actually played the spring game? Like, for me, the spring game was less than a scrimmage. Like, the, the I, I, even the year where I had, I, I had to compete for a, a, a second strength spot, coming to rest your freshman, I'm competing to see if I'm going to be the backup to Malcolm Jenkins and whoever else and secure my my spot in the lineup. It was the jersey scrimmages leading up to the spring game that was where I made my mark. And the spring game was kind of like, uh, you want to, I mean, you want to hold your own, but we weren't, we weren't running the full defense. We weren't blitzing, you know, like we weren't doing the stuff that we could do in the jersey scrimmage. We weren't mixing yeah. it up in that way. So things was kind, were kind of limited. And it wasn't a real opportunity for the 
the coach to evaluate me versus in the Jer- Jersey scrimmage where we're running everything, I'm blitzing, I'm doing all types of stuff. So I don't know how much that has changed um, yeah. or if it's changed at all, right? But, yeah, anyway, it's, it's just interesting because, you you know, we, we – we're gonna talk about the spring game, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but there is some but, stuff that you can you can yeah. There's it, definitely some things you can take away from it. So when you just, I mean, just looking at players, right? I mean, obviously, like you say, what you're calling and who the, the competition at that current time might not be, you know, you know, live, right? It might not be the best way to grade it. But if you're just looking at a guy and you're just trying to check a boxes on ability, right? Like, okay, uh, what's the center look like? Uh, snapping the ball, is he getting the snap to the to the quarterback correctly? He's supposed to be their starting center. You know, how how is he going through the mechanics of that? Uh, quarterback's yeah. throwing the ball. You know, if he's throwing it deep, do you keep missing short? Do you keep missing long? Is is he accurate? You know, you can kind of pick up on certain those so those certain type of uh, characteristics. I remember last year C.J. Hicks in the spring game, obviously, right? Like you say, they're kind of running a, a vanilla type of defense. But you could see the talent in C.J. Hicks when he was yeah. – I think he caught a pick in the spring game. You could just see how fast he could kind of get from sideline to sideline, which is very impressive for something like, oh, well, this is this is why he's a five-star linebacker. Um, so it's the little things like that you still can kind of pick pick out, right? Obviously, like I say, it's not true to true. You know, a guy make a big play in the spring game doesn't mean he's the starting wide receiver, you know, just because he caught a, a couple of fade routes in, the, in that game. But if you're, you know, keying in on certain guys, keying in on exactly how they play, how they move, uh, what they're doing, what they're not doing, it kind of can kind of start to kind of tell a, a story about who that player is and, um, you know, maybe kind of let you know, like, you know, what can he be here for Ohio State? And uh, But obviously, like I said, we'll see, see how it goes, and then we'll, we'll find some takeaways to kind of to kind of go at it from there. But, I mean, in the show, like, we have several – we got a lot of competition, right? I mean, when it comes down to it, obviously we have a lot of guys back. We have some guys come in in the transfer portal. And um, it's kind of time for, you know, some of this stuff to kind of shake out, you know, more or less, yeah. right? You know, going in, you know, now that spring ball is over, and like how did the guys do? Did someone earn a spot? Uh, there's several spots that that's, you know, up in limbo. Like I stated before, the quarterback position, you know. So obviously with the quarterback position, we had a big, Acquisition in the transfer portal. We have Will Howard come in out of Kansas State. Uh, we have uh, Devin Burn the Brown, Burn the Bose Brown, who's been taking it looks like uh, a lot of first team reps, and him and Wild Will have been switching there. Uh, we have Leakin Cleanhouse on the on the roster as well. We we know that he was a favor today. They you know he used to go out his way to bring him up, and now we have Julian saying that's on the on the on the roster as well. Transfer over, and and he's been pretty impressive as well. Yes, he. I mean, we don't talk about his often. He has he had his black strip removed, which don't mean a ton for us, but it, it does show that you know, um, you know, he's been doing the right things, and some of that things you hear about him that is actually, uh, is kind of actually standing out to the coaches and, and the team. So, first off, this quarterback position going into the spring. What's your thoughts on it? What do you feel we're at, and uh, what are you looking forward to seeing in the spring game from that position? Uh, yeah. to see if you can maybe make some type of evaluation on, you know, who, who's running the show right now. Yeah, so I had one question going in. So when they got Will Howard out of the transfer portal, I went and watched, you know, a lot of his film. Uh, and I thought, you know, decision-making for the most part was solid. Footwork was good. Some ability to escape and run the ball was good. Uh, his operation was clean. The one thing that was hard for me to really get a read on was his ability to push the ball down the field. Um, and I attribute a lot of that to Kansas State's receivers who couldn't, didn't look, appear to be able to get a lot of separation. But now when you, I've been to only one practice. And obviously about outside of that practice, you know, a lot of the, what I see from the quarterbacks is just stuff that pops up on social. But it does feel like Devin Brown is making all the deep pass type. Mm-hmm. It's like, my goodness, like every time there's an explosive play down the field. I saw, I mean, I saw Will Howell throw a, a, a wheel route to the running back out of the backfield, but it wasn't really like, it was like a blown coverage. It wasn't, but like all of the deep passes to the receivers pushing the ball down the field, it seemed like Devin Brown was making all of them. Now, um, I don't know what that means uh-huh. because one, 
I'm only talking about the stuff that I saw, right? right? right. Um, but I do think, you know, I came in initially saying, okay, it's going to be hard for Devin Brown to compete against a guy who's put out so much game tape. I mean, it's not the game tape that just shows that he's by far the best quarterback or anything like that. But when I watch Devin Brown and, and how he plays in my mind, what he could, could potentially develop to be is a guy like Will Howard. Like, the, the the way he plays. Now, that doesn't mean he can't be better or whatever. Um, but just the style of play seems similar. And they clearly got Will Howard for a reason. It almost feels like um, Devin Brown is competing against who the coaches want him to be, <laughs> right? And that's the challenge because you can only do it in practice and they can't actually see it in games, but they saw the other guy in game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... This is why I think the spring game does have value, as you mentioned, with the quarterbacks. It's seeing Devin Brown in a game-like atmosphere on national television to be able to transfer what we've been seeing in practice to the to a game type situation. We we like the way he talks. <laughs> we like the way he competes. We like everything, but the one thing that is still a question is when it comes game time, he has to drop back and throw the ball. Is he does he do with confidence? Does he have a clean operation? Um, and that's still a question mark. And I think, you know, based on how he's been playing so far, I think he might have a shot. I think he has a shot. Yeah, I mean, really, I, I like I say, I you I have to agree. I do agree. And obviously I think that's more of the standpoint I've been on. Like going into it, I be frank, I wasn't the huge Devin Brown guy, right? It just felt like uh the other quarterbacks had more experience. You know, we were talking about last year in the competition he was having with Tom McCord. I was like, well, you know, if no one's separating, just go with the guy with the most experience. You know, he just he's just been there longer, right? Type of deal. Now he's that guy. He's the guy with the most experience uh, at Ohio State. And uh, if if uh, Will Howard hasn't done anything to wow, right? Come in and say like, wow, like you know, he's. Tremendous leader, you know, far better than we thought we was getting out of Devin Brown. He's making all these plays, uh, you know, throwing the ball. And it's always tough to, to me, it's always really tough to evaluate a quarterback, especially if you're a running quarterback, because, you know, you come down to it, you can't run a practice, right? You know, you got that guy's kind of tagging off. So you don't know if he was going to run over that guy and get an extra couple yards, or was he going to actually, the move he tried, was it actually going to be successful? You don't know, because, you know, defense is kind of, yeah, I would have got him, you know, type of deal. And, you know, they kind of go to the sideline. So it's kind of get tough to evaluate. But I feel like Devin Brown is doing all, everything he can to show that, hey, look, I, I'm, I understand there's this competition here. I understand that we brought this guy in. But I'm just going to keep being me. I'm going to keep doing the right things. I'm going to be a leader on the field, off the field, uh, in the media. I'm just going to go out here and be my best self and let the chips fall where they may. And obviously, you know, when it comes down to it, um, I feel like with the way he's going, if he keeps going this way, come Saturday in the fall, he's he's them did the job enough that they're gonna have to give him some type of opportunity. Because when it comes down to it, he's a scholarship player. He's been there. You don't want to set some type of precedent as from Coach Day that yeah, once we bring a guy into the portal, you might as well get into the portal because you know you don't have is there's no opportunity for you here anymore because we don't brought this guy in. Uh, kind of in your position. So you got to let it play out. Uh, you got to, you know, let the film kind of tell the story. And you can pretty much kind of take it from there. So I feel like Devin Brown has obviously been checking a lot of boxes, been doing a lot of right things. And I look for him to kind of continue that into the spring, show his operation, get in that, and I say the huddle, but get it, get his guys lined up, get things correctly, get the ball going to the right places, as in, you know, live with that. Going into fall cap and and, and, and kind of see how things go. From yeah, there. but but he can't he can't edge him out. He has to beat him. Like it, it's it's like it's like you you're fighting the champ. And I'm not saying <laughs> Will Howard is the champ or anything like that. But the the challenge yeah. I always go back to the challenge is they know who they're getting in Will Howard. Mm. Maybe they they can learn some more being with him every day and whatever. But they know they're fairly certain who this guy is. Devin Brown has to show them that I am clearly better <laughs> than what y'all have seen. And it's hard to do in practice unless you're throwing touchdowns. I mean, if you're throwing touchdowns, you're getting explosive plays, that's enough to tell a coach, like, look, we got to put this guy on the field. Because 
if he's creating explosive plays, we're winning football game. And it's really that simple. Um, the other guy could be doing all the right things, but this guy is pushing the ball down the field. We got dogs on the outside, and he's getting it to him, and that's what he's going to have to do to win it. And he's going to have to do it in the spring game. He's going to have to do it over and over again. So the coaches is like, look, we're going to win with him. We're going to lose with him. But this is the guy um, because his upside is 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 up enough that, you know, we're not going to go with the, the safe pick. So I'm interested to see how this quarterback uh, yeah, and, and it's funny enough, obviously we like competition, but if you know, if you're Coach Day, you're Chip Kelly, you want to know who that starter is yesterday. <laughs> like they, they don't, like, you know, it's nice and fun to compete. Everybody, you know, bring their best game. But they want to make a decision that they can feel comfortable with and, and sleep with at night. So we'll, we'll, we'll just kind of have to see if, they, if anything is said from that standpoint. Another position group for, so I guess two years in a row, the offensive of the line. A lot of competition around the offensive of line. Uh, obviously, we are returning. We're returning. It's funny because we're returning four starters for, on the offensive <laughs> line, but there's still like a lot of competition around it, right? So we have Josh Simmons at left tackle, who seems to be pretty set in that position. Left guard, Diamond Jackson, he's he most likely definitely set at that position. But then things kind of become a little bit uh, question marking from there. So at the center position, we brought in Seth McLaughlin out of Alabama, who's a starting center for them. Uh, obviously, we our center starts in his back, and Carson Hensman, he's kind of, you know, he's a start center. Uh, but there's some competition at that position. Our right guard, we did lose to the uh, NFL draft. Uh, so there's legit competition at that position. Who's going to fill in, take over that role? But then Josh Fryer at the right tackle position, we are understanding that there are still some competitions there, even though he started at that role uh, all season last year with uh, Tegra. Uh, Shabola at that right, uh, right tackle position, question marks, questions there. Luke Montgomery at the right guard position. Um, uh, going to his second year, but a lot of buzz, a lot of good things being said about him as a, a player at a house, at a house, state on offensive of line. And then also uh, the player who started in the bowl game at that right guard position, Enuk, I'm going to push his last name, but Mahi uh, at their right guard position is also in competition for it as well. And you had a funny take about this, right? You know, well, a lot of people like competition. But give the people your take on the offensive line and what's your thoughts on how things should be going at this point. Yeah, well, my take is <laughs> I, I, I love competition. I'm all a fan of competition. And last year, there was competition. And we were like, shoot, it's going to shake out. You know, I, the cream rises to the top and we'll be, we'll be rolling. Except the offensive line struggle. <laughs> and honestly... I, I don't want I don't want the same thing to happen this year. And I am not, you know, I'm not giving the benefit of the doubt that, you know, they're gonna identify the right guy and, and, and make things happen. I saw the the bowl game. I it was one of the worst <laughs> offensive line performances, and it wasn't the entire offensive line. So that right guard, to me, that right guard position, I would rather them identify who they want. Is it gonna be Friar? Is it going to be Luke Montgomery? Is it, you know, like, identify who that is. Because the shuffling around, the the uncertainty, I'm not, you know, I, I normally I would say great competition is a good problem to have, et cetera, et cetera. But they need to hit the ground, hit the ground running. And I don't want to see, you know, uh, what we saw in that Cotton Bowl again or what we saw to start the season last year. Yeah, and I, I had to completely agree. I mean, obviously, it's it's funny enough, you know, former players, obviously, if you, as you guys could imagine, we have group chats and we kind of talk. We might not talk for years, but if we get to the game, everybody's kind of like, man, what's going on? With and, yeah. I mean, I, I, on the offensive line up of front, it's like we just had a lot of questions about, you know, essentially what was going on, like you said, especially when it came down to that bowl game. It's just like it was a lot of this uncertainty, a lot of things going on that you just really just cannot explain. There's a lot of missed blocks, a lot of guys yeah. running into the backfield to make a play. So, yeah, I was, it's almost like at this point, it's like, yeah, let's not have so much competition on the off the line. Let's just go with a little bit of coaching, right? Yeah, let's let's, coach. Let's, like, so if the decision is to move fire to guard and you want to play Tegra, do it. If the decision is, you know, you want Luke Montgomery at right guard, put him there till he essentially just shows and proves that he cannot do it. Or, you know, whoever that that center position, do that. And maybe if you lose that same position, you go to right guard. Make the decision. Go with it so they can kind of get it done as a unit and uh, improve. Because it's, it's different. I mean, I wasn't the most 
talented guy. So when you're at a position, it's different techniques to getting these things done. Everyone is not Paris Johnson, right? Paris Johnson, we would right. ever take him a known off the tackle, plug him at guard, let him play, and he did a fantastic job. Most people cannot do that, you know, and you need to kind of be in your position so you can learn how to get everything done, these positions, these blocks, on these plays, and that's the kind of mastery to take it into the season. And, yeah, and so I go back to that ball game. Why didn't Dallin <laughs> Hayden get an opportunity to play? Because the, 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 the talk has always been, you know, and some of it came from him as well, where he wanted to improve, improve in pass blocking, improve and catch the ball off the back, backfield. Uh, but pass blocking couldn't have been the reason why he didn't play. Because, <laughs> you know, what we, what we saw from the offensive line was much worse than any running back could have done. Uh, so I don't want to see a repeat of that. I don't, I don't ever want us to be comfortable enough. You know, this guy's been doing well in practice, et cetera, et cetera. Let's put him out there in the game. Let's reward him. That's not a reward. Right? Putting a guy out there and having that result is, is unacceptable. So let's not do that anymore. We saw, yeah. we've seen enough. Let's get a guy that <laughs> we, we, we trust to be able to play that position. And let's get them ready for the season, man. Let's get, we got too much firepower on the outside. We got too much firepower at running back. Um, we have a quarterback that there's some unknowns. And, I, and honestly, man, Kyle McCord got a lot of flack or whatever for his play. I thought we did him a disservice last year by not having a strong run game to start the season and not being really solid up front to support a first-year starter at a quarterback who didn't have a bunch of escapability back there in the pocket, right? I think we did him a disservice, and I don't want to see that play out again. Yeah, and I, I obviously I would just have to agree for the sake of time. We always could talk about that, but for the sake of time, this, I agree 100%. But also we're going to have some competition at the wheel linebacker position. Uh, between uh, it's really be time. I, I don't know how it's gonna go, but you know that uh, CJ Hicks, Sunny Styles are kind of gonna kind of battle it out. I imagine we'll see both of them when it comes to the season. Uh, tight end positions competition there as well. G Scott Jr. has been in the longest. We did bring in uh, Will Carsmack out of Ohio, out of Transfer Portal. Jeremiah Thurman in the tight end position, so he kind of young there. Uh, so it's kind of you know unknown who will be the starter. I imagine G. Scott would be able to hold it down in certain situations. You put a bigger guy out there in running situations. It says some competition at wide receiver. It's just too many guys. <laughs> we can kind of name them all. Uh, I, I'm sure that they'll be able to kind of figure out how to get Jeremiah Smith. I mean, more competition out there. Uh, to Jeremiah kind of Smith is starting. Bigger. I don't care what the depth chart says. <laughs> I don't care what the depth chart says. He could be fourth or fifth on the depth chart. He's getting targets. Yeah. You know, there's too many social media uh, <laughs> shots of him jumping up and catching the ball with his one hand. He's going to get targets. Um, the myth of of uh, of, of Ballard. Yeah, Jaden Ballard. Jayden Ballard. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, the myth of Jaden Ballard continues. I'm not sure if he gets the opportunities. But every time we see him, in the spring game, practice, whatever, he's catching some long, deep ball running past guys. Um, but he just might be a legend. He just might, you know, mm -hmm. there's been some guys that have just been legendary in terms of what they can do, but we actually don't get to really see it in live yeah. action. So, um, I don't know. We'll yeah, see. I don't know. We'll see. Emeka Ibuka, Cardinal Tate, those guys will be out there. Young guys, Brandon Ennis, Bryson Rogers will be making plays as well. So, you know, we got this good problems to have right there at that wide position, wide receiver position. But, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of, you know, what we're looking at going into spring. Obviously, it'll be an exciting time uh, for us to go out there and actually see the guys, you know, throwing the scarlet and gray, go out there and compete. Uh, so, next show, we uh, have our recap of the spring game and, you know, kind of go over what we can see. Uh, but that's our show for today. Once again, the show is brought to you by Bet Online. You can follow us on all the features of um, what, Spotify, uh, iTunes, YouTube, Feel free to reach out to us. We'll reach back out to you. And that's how we like to end our show with a nice OH. I.O. Go Bucks, and we'll catch you guys next time. Go Bucks. <laughs>